Hi guys, and welcome to the Friday Live thing with me, Mark Thompson, who's for some, some reason shorter than Tim today. Yeah. And Tim, I'm confused. I'm confused by like the lighting today on like the screen. I don't know whether it's the lighting on. Yeah, mine's a bit weird as well, but that's because I've got the blind shut and I haven't turned the the lighting on. But then again, the reflection from my forehead is enough for anyone. Mark, Mark, Mark. What? It's Black Friday. Oh, what are we going to sell, mate? <laughs> nah, nothing. I actually, I am really tired of it. I sorry if anybody's emailed me today. Please just re-email me tomorrow, because I literally just went through my email. And went no, no, I'm not interested. If I wanted to buy something, I'd have had it planned. I'd have worked out what it was, and I'd be in there already. So, so, so talking of of offers and Black Friday and all that kind of stuff, I refuse to do Black Friday and. Um, uh, actually, I'll, I'll I'll come on to the thing I was going to talk about in a second, but uh, let, 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 let's get started properly. By the way, this week we're talking about planning. Here is my my plan of the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're planning this one. Oh dear. So in, fact, we're in, in the middle of a conversation when we went live, stop the conversation. We hadn't even talked about what we we're going to talk about. So this is planning, guys. Yes, we're good at this. Plan for 2020. Um, anyway, so um, right on cue uh, in the middle of Black Friday week, um, obviously Facebook and Instagram goes down and uh, the ad platform goes down as well. And I couldn't answer yeah, any It happened last year as well, didn't it? It did happen last year, yeah. So um, they're, they're really like Mark, is obviously Mark, Zed, Mark Zuckerberg has uh, won, won over the... Uh, <laughs> The, the pleasures of everybody, uh, once again, everybody who spends any money on their platform over this time. I turn my ads off at the beginning of the week. I basically was like, because I'd seen my ads, and I, I put this in the SMO group, and um, uh, basically my ad costs since it, over the last 14 days have increased. Uh, so they're up 155%. And um, I got, it was the following day, I think, that I was like, no. I'm turning this off. It was like the CPMs had just gone, yeah, crazy. So was, there was just no point. I was, uh, yeah, I, I, I much prefer to have a quieter week, which I haven't had. Um, much prefer to have a quieter week this week, and you know, wait till next week and pay half price essentially for the same customer. Um, so yeah, if you haven't turned your Facebook ads off, maybe go and have a look at your ad platform today. Maybe think about turning it off. Yeah. Exactly. If you're um, not really on top of it. So, um, so the other thing, so speaking of ads, well, I am planning to keep it on track um, of running some Twitter and possibly Reddit ads. Oh, yeah, okay. because I've been looking at it. Um, Twitter ads at the moment, well, it's been for a while. Um, hi, Donald. Um, Twitter ads, you can target um, people, uh, people who follow certain people, right? So if you can get a list of people in your niche who've got Twitter accounts, you can just follow them, uh, throw ads to them. But the way Twitter actually phrase that is fans of, or look at, or fans who are like those fans. So they'll actually do your automatic lookalike audiences. Because obviously if, someone, if someone's only got 10,000 followers, you know, your ads are gonna run out pretty quickly. So they find, obviously they've got all the links so people like this, this, and this. So that the, if you pick, say, three people, uh, like Kim Gast, uh, Pat Flynn, and somebody else who does social media, all right, they will look at the people who follow them and look for commonalities between them and other people. So they can blow that audience up to about to a, pre, a million or so. And no, they're cheap. And also, I sent, I sent you the, the link to the article I read, wrote, read this week where they did a uh, test between Facebook ads and Reddit ads, and the click-through rate on Reddit ads was way higher than Facebook, which surprised everybody who was doing the test. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's very much, I suppose it comes down to um, relevancy of what you're looking at on Reddit versus what you're seeing on Facebook. I got targeted, I don't know whether you saw this, I know I, I think I posted it somewhere else, um, so yesterday I was like on Facebook first thing in the morning. I was just logged in to like check my Facebook page, and um, the first advert I came across 
let's see if I've still got the screenshot of it. And I'm like, was it that funny? It was. It was. It was. Uh, where is it? Uh, maybe I deleted it. Oh no, I didn't. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, let's see if I can share my screen. Share screen. Oh, the suspense is great. If you're on the podcast, you're on the edge of your seat at the moment, aren't you? <laughs> it's, it's a visual gag, honestly. Um, <laughs> so entire screens share. I'm just going to go. Um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, where is it? There we go. <laughs> My question is. Skull shaver. How did they know? I don't know, mate. I absolutely don't know. How do they know? Did they, have they done a scan of that, my, my profile picture or something? That's crazy. Oh, so anyway, you on the podcast, um, they actually targeted Tim with a, a skull shaver. Yeah. Which, which if, if nobody's ever seen the live of me, they'll be going, so what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> If they've only ever listened to the podcast. <laughs> Tim's got a Brazilian. <laughs> a whole body Brazilian. Yeah. Um, brilliant. And so so coming back to the thing that I was going to talk about before the thing I talked about before the thing I talked about um, <laughs> was to do with um, one of the things I did do this week, which is I did do an offer. And um, it wasn't it's not specifically a Black Friday offer or anything like that. Um, what we did was um, we have our subscribers, so the people who are our regular receivers of Lean Green, so they get like um, a tub every month on autopilot. Um, it's a recurring billing. Bank. And every now and again, we just chuck them a crazy silly offer. And the crazy silly, silly offer was for our capsules, which we've got four products. Um, normally, if you added, it off, added them up, it would be 86 quid. I think we sold them for 40 um and um that go that that email goes out to about 290 people we got about a 50 percent open rate maybe a little bit more 55 percent open rate on that email um and uh i think we had 20 last count we've had 25 people take us up on the offer so <laughs> essentially we've got like well over a 10 percent conversion rate and my maths is really screwed up um so but it just shows by having like those regular subscribers or those regular people who are buying from you on a regular basis, if you put the right offer in front of them, they will buy. Um, the thing is, we didn't do it necessarily to make money. It was more more to trying to go, okay, we just want to do something cool, something different for these guys. We haven't done some, anything for a wee while. And it was like, right, let's chuck them something crazy so that they'll take advantage of it. Plus, of course, if they decide that they like them, then they might want to add them into their subscription. So there's a certain amount of goodwill that we're getting um, with our with our regular subscribers, and also we're hoping to increase the average order value of those subscribers as well. And we'll talk about average order value in a moment when we start getting into the planning stuff. So yeah, th things like that you can you can still do promotions this week, but I've kept them internal, like to people who are already our customers um, and. You know, it's just a, a way of say, just showing a bit of goodwill to them. Yeah, same here. I, mean, I, sent, I sent out um, a coupon. I did, didn't actually did an email during the week about coupon codes. Yeah. Basically, why is this the only time you see coupon codes? Yeah. It should be part of your your marketing. Okay, so sort of get get on to a little bit about planning. Um, <laughs> talk about you should have an, have an automation set up already with email set to go out. That has a coupon code in it. So when somebody does something, okay, they visit your site three times and they don't buy. Well, send them a coupon code. It could be the one thing that just tips them from really interested but not buying to really interested and buying. Um, if you have somebody who's bought three products, okay, have an automation go that thanks thanks them for being a good customer and gives them a, a, li a lifetime coupon code of twenty percent. Uh, one time use coupon code off your next purchase. Look, here's 20% off. Stuff like that. Um, you can get it all set up automatically. To all I, think, um, I think the whole, like, and, and, you know, we didn't, this isn't designed to really talk about Black Friday as such, but one of the problems with blanket discount codes or blanket offers to everybody and anybody is it, it takes away the importance of it. And also, it basically, you're 
taking more than 20%, if you say, for example, you give a 20% discount on, on you know, a blanket discount to everybody, basically you've lost 20% of your revenue. In terms of profit, in a lot of cases, we'll be talking probably about 50 to 75% of your profit margin has gone out the window in one yeah. fell swoop, which is why Black Friday is not a great idea in the first place. Um, to, to be doing these blanket discounts. It's a way of just basically, you know, just shutting off a lot of your customers, your existing customers, because they just wait until you've got the next offer on, or they'll be waiting until Black Friday. By keeping it internal or by doing it like Mark's talking about, where you, it's got very, very specific rules of who gets to see that coupon code, then it actually benefits you a lot. It's kind of like the, the people who are most likely to, um, basically, uh, they're just sat on the fence or yeah. they're most likely to stop buying from you. They've been buying from you, but they've kind of got a bit, bit bored and they haven't got been given a good enough reason to continue buying from you. Th those people who are about to churn, those are the ideal people to then start sending like discount ladder offers to. So where you basically go, well, you haven't bought in 90 days. Here's a, here's a discount code to get you going. And then about 15 days later, if they still haven't bought, give them a slightly bigger discount. And then you have the Hail Mary discount code a little bit further down the line. The idea behind that is that you're not just going, hey, everybody have a 20% discount code because we're so freaking cool, um, which basically just destroys your business. Um, be really, really, really specific about who it is that you're giving those offers to. That, so I that a secret as we know no one's listening to this show. Cool. I had three different PSs in that email I sent. And depending on what people received was depending on what they purchased or what actions they'd taken in the past few months. Sneaky. Yeah. But once again, you know, it's easy to do. If you plan this, stuff, I keep on using the word planning deliberately. <laughs> if you plan this stuff, <laughs> we're staying on track, Tim, <laughs> hey. uh, in advance. You know, pl start planning for three months in advance. Um, okay, in three months' time, I want to do an offer for this. Okay, well, let's work on three months to get an audience lined up for that offer. So we'll, we'll look um, we'll look at that when we move on to planning, which we're moving on to now, aren't we? I think so. I, I've done all the, the uh, rounds and stuff for this week. Yeah, that's enough random. Right, so the idea of the show is to talk about planning or anti-planning because... Personally, I hate the whole, right, here's my plan for the year. Okay, by December next year, I want to have this, this, and this. Because what happens then, you go, by December next, next year, I want to double my income, or I want to have an extra $60,000. So you immediately go, January, shit, I haven't done $5,000, which is one twelfth of what I planned. Oh, this isn't working, I'll stop. The whole idea about planning is to give yourself an achievable goal that's just in reach that you've got a really good chance of making. So which is why, personally, I break my planning down into daily. Right, okay, I'll come in on Monday morning, I'll sit down, okay, what do I want to achieve this by the end of this week? Okay, I want to create a new course. Okay, well, let me plan this out on, today I'll do this, this, and this, three things, that's it. Anything extra is a bonus. So I always try and set myself just, just three tasks a day. One of those tasks might be writing an email, well, that, okay, well, that just gives me two tasks to do that day. And that is that means it's achievable, but it's like driving you forward. And it's a constant driving forward uh, that works. So to give you um, kind, of, uh, kind of a bit of a little snippet, if you like, of what Mark's talking about, some of the things that we do, and I don't know where I got this from. I think it's like my um, there's a guy I know who's a guy called Drew Sanocki who's really, really shit hot when it comes to kind of like the whole e-commerce world. And he talks about um, the thing that works in e-commerce and pretty much for every business, to be, to be frank, it's like um, it's consistent pressure over time. That's basically what achieves results. And that's what achieves like multiplication of results, as it were. Um, so we break things down into um, very, the, 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 the three pillars of how to grow a business, which is more customers, increase your average order value, increase the frequency of purchase, okay? And if you've read anything by any of like the top marketing guys, they talk about those three pillars. So it's customers, 
increase the basket value or cart value or whatever you want to call it and increase the frequency of purchase that is how you increase a business so we look at everything um uh, everything we look at within for, for lean greens is very much about um how can we increase one of those three things so if i wanted to double my business it's not a case of doubling each of those things it's basically just increasing each of those things by about 30 percent so if i increase you know the number of new customers i get by 30 percent and increase the frequency by 30 percent increase the average order value by 30 percent then i've doubled my business and it works it does work it has worked this year very very nicely because we focused very much on those three elements of of and, and sometimes you know you might add more customers in one month or you might be focusing on average order value another month or increase the frequency in another month it's you know each of those things is like it's just a a constant process so we, we have a, a little spreadsheet that we use that is where we write down any marketing ideas that we have and if if you're like anything like me, then you're like an idea hand grenade about to go off. Literally, all of the time, you've got ideas. Like, oh, I could do that email sequence. Oh, I could do that that Facebook ad. Or I could go and do YouTube promotion. Or I could go and advertise in X, Y, Z. So many different marketing ideas that we could do that um, it, it, it's, it's quite difficult sometimes to figure out which one do we focus on first what's the most important one? what's going to net us the biggest result the quickest result the most effective result so there's a spreadsheet that um i've actually got a copy of it it's actually this one is actually from drew snocky again um i'm going to see if i can share my screen hold on one second because i pressed the wrong button D -d 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 -d, share screen and you can create this sheet yourself it's dead easy to do um hopefully it should just go again and if i go to that one so very very simple spreadsheet all it is is what the channel i.e whether it's like you know whether you're doing um say for example paid ads or whether you're doing content marketing affiliate marketing trade shows all that kind of stuff and then the idea within that so like you know let's take for example uh website okay this is one which we've done this year so uh sorry we've done a couple of years ago now which is um website uh try and upsell amp, which is what we've in incorporated about two and a half years ago the multiplier is average order value so if you look on this list it's average order value n is the number of new customers and f is frequency so new frequency and average order value so those are your three pillars and then within that you go okay so what state status of that particular idea are we at and it's yeah because it's just a sample thing it says we're testing this idea at the moment and then we have these three columns here one two three okay and it's scaled um of one to three in all of them so whether it's high impact medium impact or low impact okay let's go to our website op option it's gonna have it reckons low impact actually it's had quite high impact it's had mm, i would probably say medium impact for us so for me i would score this as a two confidence is how confident are you that it's actually going to net the result that you think it's going to net you so a high gives you high confidence gives you one medium gives you two low confidence sorry uh, yeah low confidence gives you a three and then we got effort how hard is it to actually inst instigate this particular idea and again you've got high medium and low and you score based upon that so basically the ideas that you go after are the ones which have high impact, high confidence and low effort, which gives you a score of three. So it gives you an ability to score your ideas so you know which ones to, to follow up with and to chase down and which ones to do first. And that's a really, really simple way of planning your yeah. marketing ideas so that you're not just doing like anything and everything that comes to your mind and not really getting an idea of which one's going to get you the best results. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I love the um, social display ads, Facebook ads, whatever Ezra does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those who don't know, Ezra is uh, Ezra Firestone. Um, he does uh, a huge amount with Facebook. He's probably one of the, he spends ridiculous, insane amounts on Facebook ads. And if you've, um, he, 
you can actually, uh, I think in previous years, he's shown his store stats um, on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And he's like, literally, he will do millions of dollars this weekend. Um, uh, and he's like, you know, the, 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 the orders that he's getting in is literally thousands of orders every minute. It's insane. Oh, unless Facebook crashes. Unless Facebook crashes, of course, yeah. But he, he, does, he does the smart thing where he basically, he does email collection ahead of time. Yeah. So what he'll do is he'll put out to his own email list as well as Facebook ads two weeks ago when it was cheap, um, saying, we've got some Black Friday offers. Um, be the first to know, put your email address it, or you know, sign up to get our, our offers first. He gets loads of people onto his list beforehand, and it means that all he has to do is send an email. He doesn't need to be running ads on Black Friday because he's got the list of all the people who want the offer. Because that means that the guys from Funnelytics are following his model because they've been doing a mystery box all week. What's in the mystery box? Sign up to find out what uh, facts, sign up to find out early what are Black Friday dealers. So That's they've got it. everybody onto a list beforehand. And then acquiring a customer. Own your list. Nobody yeah. can take it away. Nobody can crash your list, hopefully. No. Well, acquiring a customer today is, you know, for, for us normally, acquiring a customer is about 15 to 20 pounds. Now, today, I would estimate it's probably going to be about 45 to 60 pounds. And it's just like, why would you do that? That's insane. Sorry, that's going back to Black Friday. But hopefully you get an idea from those from from that that spreadsheet and you can create your own spreadsheet. It doesn't take very much effort. It really is like go onto Google Sheets and away you go. And it will just allow you to plan which ideas you should be pursuing first. And it's not it is planning, but it's not planning. It's kind of like going, oh, well, you know, I know which thing I want to do first rather than in December, we're going to do this. In January, we're going to do this. It's, you know, it's a better way of doing it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what the, one of the reasons for doing this show is I wanted to get across the fact that, you know, pl planning is great at a small micro level. Once you go big on planning, you're screwed because you, you, li you literally limit yourself. Mm -hmm. um, no planning you drive contact with the enemy and the enemy is yeah, usually... Exactly. Nice. You're probably, you're probably Everything else. Time, I? Um, <laughs> I did, a, I did a, a big post last week in um, the foundation all about planning and you know, my sort of view of it. Speaking of like, so on Sunday morning, I sat down and went, do you know what? I literally got an idea for doing the roadmap for what we're going to do next year. It helps keep me on track, right? So pretty much that's a lot of planning I've already done for SMO in the next year. Did it in an hour, write a post. I got to the end of that and went, ooh, hang on a minute. On there, I've got like do a bit of training for the 2020 roadmap. Okay, I well, sat sat in the garden, fired up the laptop. Literally four hours later, I had the course finished. And I actually I thought I'd been writing for about half an hour. I'd actually been writing for four hours, and I'd actually finished the course. The thing that uh, was blown me blown my mind actually in that whole like sentence that you just did was, I went and sat in the garden. <laughs> Here, here in Scotland, it's like minus two. <laughs> it's pissing it down with rain. There's one mum at the end. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it was about 16, 17 degrees. Yesterday, it was 23 degrees, which was some, some band from the 60s, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I've made a note as we go on, right, for planning. What you should plan to do for next year. I've got one thing so far. So my, my, my blank sheet for planning has now got one thing on it. And that says, grow your list. Plan on growing your list. Now, I didn't plan this before, but I'm going to do it now. Um, if you haven't got ConvertBox Secrets yet, you've got one day, literally one day to get it at the current price. Go to convertboxsecrets.com forward slash CB1 and you can buy it. If you go to the front of ConvertBox, just go to convertbox.com. You can't get it because it's not for sale. It's only for sale on that link and other people's affiliate links because that's the way they're doing it okay you can go on a waiting list and they might send you something out but if you go to convertboxsecrets.com forward slash cb1 not only can you buy it um you'll see what it's about and it is without a doubt the best way to get people on your list it is stunning what you can do you can offer coupon codes on it you can segment your order you can do loads of stuff go and have a look the sky is the limit if you get through that link there send me your receipt and you can come on a call like this with me 
for about half an hour and I will take you through it and give you ideas and guidance. It, it's a brilliant piece of software. I, I use it for Lean Greens. Um, it's, it's basically, it's the way that we capture leads ourselves. Like, you know, it's, yeah, I, don't use, I use. don't use any of the other software that's out there for, for, for capturing emails at the moment. Yeah. Actually, this is the only platform I use. One of the, uh, one of the top guys who I, we know, Alex, who actually helps advise on the ad skills group, which is just in Brooks group of high level marketers. Alex is actually one of the sort of mentors or babysitters on there, whatever he is. And um, he, he, I think, I hope, I hope it was Alex said it. He was going, yeah, he was looking at what they're doing with ConvertBox. He's fully all in because the ideas that they have, and then they managed to translate into usable things. It was amazing. So yeah, I'll do it one more time. Convert box secret. It's not a Black Friday deal. It's just <laughs> it, 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 the price is going up on the 30th or Sunday, the 1st of December. The price right. goes up uh, and then it goes to monthly. You can get it for a single lifetime. Of, I mean, I've had it two years now, I think. Is it two years, 18 months I've had it? Yeah, I've had it for about, about, a year about, and a half. about $15 a month. It's cost me so far. Uh, and so each month that gets smaller and smaller. So in the end, it's going to cost you cents a month long term. Like Thrivecar, I cannot think what the average cost of Thrivecar for me has been compared to how much revenue I've raised through it. The, the, the ratio of that is minimal. Right. I think one of the, one of the things that uh, I just want to come back to is like you've literally written one thing on your planning for next year. And which is growing my list. And it's like, you know, the only thing I would uh, certainly look at is maybe going a little bit deeper with uh, specific targets on that. It's understanding what that actually truly means to your business. And it's like, it's those key performance indicators, blah, 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 that we all love and hate. Um, but it's, it's the same for us. It's like, we look at things like, whilst it doesn't mean much in its own right, having us increase our Say, for example, our Facebook page likes from eight and a half thousand to over 40,000 this year has had a significant impact on the monthly revenue. Now, the, the, the correlation is there, whether what the cause and effect is actually true or not, we don't know. We can't really sort of get that nail that down. But it's one of the things that has changed significantly um, this year is is actually growing on that audience has enabled us to capture more people onto our email list, which ultimately has allowed us to get more new customers onto our thing. So what we do track is, yes, we keep a track of how big our reach is, how big our audience is, but also how many new subscribers are we getting in each month? And it comes back to those key metrics and understanding your key metrics is like, how many new customers are we getting? What's the average order value? Um, what's the you know the lifetime value of our customer? You know um, how many people have joined our subscription program? All those numbers are important to us as a business. And it's like if if you to do anything is to for planning for next year is to figure out those key metrics and make a commitment to track them. And it's like if you and focus on them because when you do track them and focus on them then they will grow what you look at what you track will naturally grow and that's what you're trying to do essentially is to um if, if you're going to have a plan that would that would be my plan and it'd be like okay so i want to get to my my plan is i want to get to a thousand subscribers on lean greens next next year as in subscription customers um and it's like, where am I at now? Okay, so I'm around about 400, 450 subscribers. It's like, okay, so where, how do I, how quickly am I likely to get there? How many people am I getting at the moment? You know, it's going to take me probably the best part of six to probably six to 12 months to achieve that at the current rate. Okay, how can I accelerate that? And so that's how my planning takes place is based around that one key metric of I want to get to a thousand subscribers. That's the one key goal I want to get to, and I track back from there. And it's like, okay, how can I do this faster? How can I get, you know, instead of 30, 40 new subscribers a month, how can I get 100 new subscribers a month? How can I get 100, um, 100 sales a day kind of thing? How many? How can I get 100 orders every day? 
okay, then I'd start tracking back and going, okay, so I need to get this amount of frequency. I need to increase the frequency by, by, like this. I need to increase the number of new customers from this. I need to have a higher average order value, blah, 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 blah. So all those things, and that's when you start cascading down the different ideas that we talked about in the spreadsheet as well. Um, so you're focusing on the right things rather than just being busy. Mark sent me a perfect thing this morning, which was like, oh, take a look at uh, this particular offer for this particular software, and I, it shall remain nameless, conversion fly, um, uh, with 89% off or whatever it is for the, the, the Black Friday deal. And it's just like, no, we don't need it. You don't need it as a piece of software. It's like it doesn't it do, it will not help me increase the number of customers directly. I I've used conversion fly. I hate it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I've actually been a member twice of that. Yeah. And, I, and I was just I'll paying forty nine dollars a month, and now it's sixty five dollars lifetime. So obviously they're, they're back. They're at the end of the development cycle on that one. Who knows? Yeah, so anyway, with that. But it's like, how 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 is that going to? Yes, I appreciate tracking certain numbers, but you can you can certainly have death by metrics, you know, where you're literally buried under the number of numbers uh, that you've got to track. And it's like, you know, it doesn't help me move my business forward um, uh, by having all of those metrics. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it you know, focus on the right things. For, uh, focus I mean, on the you, you, things. When, when you're planning even if you're just doing it in your head, you have to know something about your numbers. You, and you have to be realistic. If you're right, you sit down today and say, okay, I may want to do a thousand dollars a month. Let's go, let's build a product. Well, hang on, stop there, stop there just one minute. You need to have an idea of how many people you have to get in your list. How many people you've got to see that offer to convert. Now, if you're only converting one or 2%, yeah, you're gonna struggle if you're starting from scratch. I mean, yeah, if you've got an audience, if you've got a, a list of 100 people and you're only converting one or 2%, well, the math is not tough on that one. Um, yeah, so yeah. You, you, you've got to go, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to get 10,000 people uh, to see my offer every month to reach my goal. Okay, now what do I need to do to get 10,000 people? So you can work it both, with, both ways. It's a lot of people are really unrealistic in their plans, and it's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate. Um, start with a really reasonable plan. I'll, give me two seconds. It's audience. Right. Let me show. Let me show you. Give me just go share my screen now. Uh, if I remember how to do share my screen, share screen. The screen mark. Uh, at the Chrome tab. So I wrote this this week, as I mentioned. Okay, so this is the 2020 roadmap. Yes, on full screen, right. So you can go, I'll put the link below, it might already be below. It is um, right. So go there, you can get this for free, you can roll for free, right? It's about building your online business in 2020, right? What I wanna draw your attention to is the seven questions that I've come up with to help you basically plan things. First one is what's your offer? Okay, you've got to know what you're offering with. It doesn't matter if you're an affiliate or you've got your own courses or you're an agency, whatever it is, what is your offer? And you don't confuse your offer with your product. A lot of 90% of people probably confuse their offer with their product when they're starting out. Okay, so know what your offer is. If you, I go deep into all these so you actually know what the questions are and how you should be answering it. Who's your audience? You know, what type of people will buy that offer? What content will engage your audience? So the, that audience, once you know who your audience is, okay, what type of content will actually get their attention? And how will you get leads? You know, you've got to work out how you're going to get those leads or those people or get those people onto a list, right? So what will appreciate? What would they like to get onto that list? Okay, so you've got your answer to that. Okay, so how now you're going to engage those leads? Once they're on your list, how are you going to keep them engaged? Okay, what are you going to send them? What are you going to talk about? Okay, and finally, almost finally, what's the call to action? Okay, what are you going to actually send them to get them to purchase your product? Now, if you, I've actually done, I called it a workbook. It's a crap spreadsheet. It's not even a spreadsheet, actually. No, it's not even a spreadsheet. It's just a crap document, but it's a workbook. So, you know, write down the answer to these questions. 
I explain every question in there, write it down, and then at the end, you'll have a plan. The seventh question is the most important question. Okay. And then, Tim, can you guess what that is as it's your question? Is it my question? It's your question. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. What happens next? Oh, that one. Oh, that yeah. question. <laughs> that question, the most important question. But yeah, seriously, it's even if you don't go and grab that free report, just go down those list of questions and ask them. Write them on a piece of paper. And every time you do a new project, write those questions out. Because at the end, you'll have you know, a plan, a simple plan. Okay, well, yeah, I'm gonna to need to do the, I need to do this type of opt-in. I'm gonna need this audience. I'm gonna to have to engage the audience this way, and this is my call to action. Your business, your plan's there, and then you just run through it every day doing something to grow that business. We've got comment, we got comment, we got comment. <laughs> <laughs> have you looked at Market Plan IO? Just like Funny but much cheaper. Literally. <laughs> a minute before we went live, I went, by the way, Tim, you need to check out Market Plan IO. I'll send, I'll send you a link on Skype. Oh, so, yeah, I've actually, I actually signed up about 10 minutes before we went live. Um, I've known about it for since they started it, but because it was by the guys who, who took over Conversion Fly and confu confused the hell out of me every time I went into Conversion Fly, um, I didn't really look at it. I looked at it now and, oh, actually, there's a lot of stuff in there that could be quite useful. Um, Do you not so think... Do you not think, though, with this, the, all these tracking tools, and I, I kind of get, I understand yeah. why they exist, Funnelytics, yeah, this is, Conversion Market Fly. is actually more than a tracking tool. So that they've got a Kanban board in there somehow. Okay. So whether it automatically populates a Kanban board based on the actions that you take or your actions that your, uh, your staff put in there. So it looks like a collaboration tool. Yeah, one of the things I find frustrating, and this is what, you know, we get going through the social media sort of posting and scheduling tools thing for our, for, for our business this last few months, is that um, we kind of get obsessed. Uh, it's that whole going back to that um, techniques, not tools kind of thing, is that we do get obsessed with like needing to look for a tool to do something that would actually, you know, a, a calendar or even a piece of paper would actually do the job. Um, Remind me in the morning to do this. <laughs> yeah. If you were to walk into my office right now, not this office, this is my home office. Um, in my office at the moment, we have um, quite a lot of wall space and we've been pick, pinning up. Yeah, Siri, just on a reminder. Yeah. So, so you can do it that way. I'm looking at all your notifications. Um, uh, <laughs> one, of, one of the things that we've got up on the, on the wall now is we've just got like lots of like these A1, like, blank sheets paper and all we're doing is we they're reminders they're like okay this is the list of web pages that we need to um focus on because according to my analytics they're the most visited pages on my site so i've taken the top 10 and i've gone right those are the ones that we need to focus on and i've got another one which is like okay these are the uh photography that we need getting done these are the blog posts that we need to create you know these are the the, the main landing pages that we're sending people to and it's like, it's, that's about as complicated as I, as I need to get a lot of the time. I don't necessarily need a tool to kind of like pick, put all the bits together and visualize it. It's like, you know, even just having a whiteboard, um, you know, a whiteboard is the best 100 bucks you'll ever spend to be able to track and to like, you know, do a bit of a visual diagram of how your funnel works. Um, and you don't necessarily need, I get the whole point behind having the nerdy stuff behind it, which drags all the numbers in here, left, right, and center. But to be honest with you, I kind of feel like a bit of paper or a whiteboard will do the job most of the time. So as much as I love like looking, and I've looked at Funnelytics, I've got a Funnelytics account. The problem is, is that I probably used it for about a week and then stopped using it. Um, I, I suppose the only um, limit, the only one which I do look, use is a Kanban style thing, which is Trello. Um, that's the only tool really that I look at. And it's my kind of like my note taking um, capacity rather than having notes on my phone, I'll have a Trello board, which is where I dump all my ideas. Yeah, post-it notes, magic whiteboard film. Yeah, that stuff is amazing. If you've never seen the magic whiteboard stuff, it comes in a roll 
and you yeah. just you tear a sheet off and it's basically it's a whiteboard but as a sheet of paper kind of thing um, yeah. Ian, for both of you on the podcast, we're not going to exclude you totally today. Yeah. Um, a Walker post-it notes or magic whiteboard film and whiteboard pen, and you have all the tech you need and a phone to snap and share. Actually, speak of, <laughs> I've actually got a notebook that comes with an app, and you basically hold the, hold the app over the notebook, and it turns it into a graphic uh, image that uploads it into Google Drive for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, um, Ian has actually got a really other good thing earlier that sort of ignored because it was you know what Ian conf confuses the hell out of me with everything he writes <laughs> I used to run programs with multiple project managers a team of 250 plus but the thing I didn't require my project manager to do was an well, that Microsoft project plan yeah. <laughs> MS project <laughs> MS project plan they'd spend way too much time fiddling about it instead my secret technique yeah exactly it's, true. it's like the amount of time that you would certainly for project managers god they're the worst um, having been a project manager and my wife as well been a project manager in the past is no, that we yeah. near a project yeah. no, probably probably very wise but the, the, you know the whole like you know you spend more time like administering the tool than actually working um, so, which is which is why keeping it simple like literally having a Kanban board style thing like Trello or having a physical version of that on your wall and that's all you need um and that's about as planning as you probably need to get most people need to get yeah i mean uh, i think that the, the one thing to take away from this today is like planning i know i was almost said overrated it's not planning is is, is vitally important for your business but don't over plan mm -hmm. and don't plan for a year ahead have a goal so last year my goal was to double my affiliate income well, I maxed it. I went from a, I went up to five thousand dollars a month on it at one point, simply because that was my goal and I focused on it. Um, I think we, we, when we started it, that, that was it last last year or the year before. It was the year before we did it, wasn't it? Year before. Year before we did it, we did the um, affiliate sort of set set up some recurring income three month sprint, and I started off with a hundred dollars recurring income. By the end of that year, that got up to five thousand dollars simply because I, I, I had something to work on. And I hadn't planned everything, I'll do th I hadn't gone, I'll do this site and this site and this site and this site. I just had this overarching plan to focus on recurring affiliate income. And then I got an idea, now, oh, I'll do, a, I'll do a site for um, active campaign. I'll do a site for this, I'll do a site for that. I'll write an article about this because my focus was on Okay, I'm going to re do recurring income. It wasn't planned out in here. Do this blog post today. Do this, this blog post tomorrow because I'd never stick to that. No, no, very, very few people have the ability to stick to a plan uh, if it's too rigid. You want flexibility because one day you're not going to get into the office. One day life's going to. If I planned everything down to the last minute, this week would have been written off. Right, I'd get get the end of the week. I'd be really fed up and pissed off because I hadn't achieved anything. So we're off. The, we're, I'm, off I'm actually off to the airport. Soon we finish today to go and collect one of our good good old members. Oh, one of yeah, Mr. Anders Brown. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Yeah. So he's, he's yeah. actually hi to everybody on the lead or the train to Leeds Bradford Airport at the moment, where he's listening to this. <laughs> um, I hope hope they're enjoying it. See, I've come across all sorts of different people who have different approaches to planning. And there's the um, guy called uh, Ryan Levesque. And I've been to a couple of his events. Super, super switched on guy. If you've never read his book, Ask, definitely well worth um, yeah. being hold of the copy. Um, lovely guy. He plans his days and his weeks down to literally the minute. And he's like literally got like his day is set and his plans like when he's having breakfast, when he's going to do his workout, when he's going to write an email, when he's going to, and, and it's like, it works for him because yeah. it's just like nonstop for him. And he's, he's on a mission. And for me, if I was to do that, I'd burn out in about three days. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm sure Mark would be the same. It's like, you know, I have a vague plan of my week. I know that say, for example, on a Friday yeah. morning, that typical day, one, two, yeah. three. It's like, um, yeah, on a Friday, I know I've got a Friday live thing to do. 
on a Monday, you know, generally it's a busy morning in terms of like new orders and stuff that's going on with Lean Greens and all that kind of stuff. So I dedicate that period of time to actually being in the office, actually like helping some of like the transactional stuff, as well as then having a view for like, okay, well, I want to run this offer and this email and I need to write that and I need to place an order for, you know, a new a new batch of whatever product is running out and all this kind of stuff. So I have a period for that. But then the rest of the week is kind of a bit loose. But what I do exactly as Mark does is like I have three things that are like, okay, what, what's going to move us forward? What's going to move my business forward this week? Okay, what three things are going to uh, impact that? And I, again, it tends to rely on come back to the, the list that I showed you before, the spreadsheet of, okay, these are the ideas that we've got. Which one am I going to put my time and effort into? You know, and it's it's things like, you know, I, I've got um, it's in one of my – one of my notebooks, um, you know, literally I have AOV, F and C, C for customers. And it's like, I have a list under there of all the different ideas I've got to basically process. And it's like, right, okay, I'm gonna pick on that one, pick on that one, I pick on that one. Those are the three which I'm going to do this week. Yeah, brother lifestyle planning, that's it. Um, <laughs> also, yeah. my, my plan for next year, my, my 2020 plan is grow my list. That's it. I mean, I haven't put a number on it. I would love to have, right, so point one, I want to double, double my list. Goal one, double my list. Goal two, maybe get there, triple my list. Goal three, get the 10,000 subscribers, okay? 10,000 subscribers, I'm not going to get there, okay? I wouldn't know what to do with 10,000 subscribers. Um, but the fact that it's there, and I can go, okay, I'm just gonna focus now next year on growing my list. So you'll you'll see, um, one, of the, one of the reasons for me going to Thinkific was it makes it easy to grow your list because you're giving stuff away. You can give away, as I said with that 2020 roadmap, I can give that away, but it gets people onto my list because Thinkific hooks up to Active Campaign. The, when they sign up to Thinkific, they get passed to Active Campaign, automation starts, email goes out. You probably, if you signed up for that, you'll probably got an email. Um, if you haven't, oh my God, what are you doing? There you go. Courses.seriousmarketingacademy.com. Courses, forward slash courses, forward slash 2020 marketing roadmap. Remember, remember my tip of having a memorable or a memorable URL. I forgot. <laughs> I didn't plan for it. Um, but really, I'll just link to the foundation somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Have one idea. Okay, what your plan is not to have a plan is to have an idea, a goal, right? So this is what, so feel free everybody next December when we do planning for 2021, um, ask me, Mark, how did you grow your list? Oh, hang on. How did you grow your list? And hopefully I will have done. Why do you reckon Tim's got a golf course on his back wall where he doesn't play golf? Where's he gone? So I'm coming back. Why have you got a golf course behind you? A what, sorry? Why have you got a picture of a golf course? Well, that? Yeah. That's not a golf course. What is it? It's a Scottish lock. Well, there must be a golf course. There's, a, there's golf courses all over Scotland. It, um, it's actually, um, I think it's uh, somewhere up north. Anyway, um, it's a very nice photo, a very, very nice picture. Um, right, so this, I hope this was important. Um, there, it's a very thick book about a very simple idea um and, and it's it's something which i if you're going to set a target it's kind of cut you, you're on the right path mark with what you're saying about like going okay i want to double my list um to get, it's kind of like it needs to have a bit of a bit of juice behind it just yeah. give it let's say that so say for example you go i want to i want to get to ten thousand subscribers ten thousand subscribers really it's it's a bit of a there's not enough meat behind it yeah. you, what you want to go is like, i want to get to ten thousand subscribers but still maintain 50 percent open rate what's that called measure what matters measure measure what matters okay i'll just i was just checking if it was in the library it's not this you know in terms of the stuff that it's um talking about it's got um it's basically how google works um to set goals for like you know and it's not it's not like necessarily like 
big ass goals it's generally over a, a 12 week period so real short term stuff but um with an overall goal so one of the goals that google set was that they wanted to get to i think it was something like uh, a billion a billion minutes of, of videos watched on youtube or something mad like that yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's like, you know, how can or how can they get to like a million minutes viewed per day, that kind yeah. of thing, because they know that that generates a certain amount of 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 income from them for them. Um, but it also has other impacts by going, OK, so a million minutes of video views a day actually requires this amount of energy production. So it's got like an engineering aspect yeah. to it. So that the engineers know okay how much cooling that they need and how much electricity they need and how much processing power and whether the, the coders need to make changes to the code to make it more efficient so blah, blah, all this kind of stuff which is I tell you, if you're a bit of a nerd it's actually a really good book to read from that perspective do you want the stunning fact of the week that relates to google go on then. their very first server was built of lego <laughs> seriously they built their first server of lego Google started as a project to digitize a library, right? So they needed to put, they needed uh, 10 four gigabit drive, gigabyte drives, which were like really rare at the time, and there was no way to hold them. So they built it out of Lego. They built a server out of Lego. How cool is that? Ah, uh, dear, brilliant. So interesting fact of the week, nailed it. Um, yeah, so. Basically, Tim, what's your goal for next year? What's, what's your my goal for next year? Um, I, I've already said it once in this, but it's I want to get to a thousand subscribers on uh, of recurring billing customers on Lean Greens. Um, that's that's my goal because I know what that means to. Sorry, what's your current figure? If you don't mind answering it, if it's not too. I think uh, when I looked at it yesterday, it was three hundred ninety something. Um, so. You want to up it by two thirds, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So there we go. I'm going to grow my list. I'm going to get. I'm going to. Okay. I'll I'll treble I'll treble my list. You'll treble your subscribers. I'll treble my list. And we there, there you go. go. We've got a goal. Hey, we and we else got any goals they want to share with us? So basically, we're gonna <laughs> we've got we've got about two well about eight minutes left. Um, what we're gonna do now? We're gonna take a whole our show and we condense it down into one sentence <laughs> basically uh, give yourself a decent size goal okay and then just work don't plan intricately for it just work, unless you're the type of person that has to plan just work for every day nudge that needle a little bit more do something that grow that <laughs> so i'm just I'm just seeing michael's message <laughs> thank you mikey uh so that that's probably where i got it sally right if you're not right i'm going to say this now if you're not on sally's list right please get on her list uh, sally do you have a do you have a url that we can send people yes, to sally put, put a link where people can get on your list sally writes absolutely when she bothers to write them absolutely <laughs> brilliant emails seriously you everybody can learn from sally's emails they are superb so whenever her see her emails are one of the ones I don't delete because I know they're going to be educational with a message. So Sally, I, um, I it's, it's, it's probably SallyLazarus.com anyway. Yeah. But seriously, she, her emails are brilliant. Yeah. Here we go. Look, another fan. Yeah. In fact, um, me and Michael met Sally at the same time we met each other. The three of us all met up at the same day in the same place. That must have been a, a cataclysmic effect, uh, like event. No, it, it was brilliant, mate. It was, it was worlds aligning. <laughs> well, so yes. <laughs> it was, it was 20, actually, Andre was there as well. It's 2012 Warrior Forum London event. The Jesus. only ever London event the Warrior Forum did, probably because we were there. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> right, so. Yeah, so please get on Sally's list. Yeah, uh, right. I keep losing connection though. I'm not sure. <laughs> go to sallylazarus.com or come into the foundation and I'll ask Sally what her you. Sally, go and pass, 
post your somewhere where people can sign up for your, your list. Seriously, it's educational. She she writes brilliant, brilliant, brilliant emails. So there you go. That's and that's how I found out Lego. So um yeah, there's a there's a few, a few takeaways from from today. I think you know measure what matters. Um, it's it's kind of it is really nerdy. It goes a bit deeper than I want it to. Um, but it's it, the the concepts behind it are actually you know it's a, the big ass hairy goals that you know we're looking to create for ourselves. Um, but it's then what you do with that. It's like okay, so what are the actions that I'm, I'm going to take towards that? And if you look at my board in, in the office, I have a whole section of it which is how do I get more people onto our subscription program? So what what offers are open at the moment? What sequences, automations have I got running at the moment to get people onto that subscription? Uh, are we sending out cards in like you know the inserts into the you know our current customers and new customers to persuade them to join our subscription program? All those different actions have the effect of getting more people onto our subscriptions. It's like okay, so what can we do to double it? What can we do to triple it? Um, so those those are the that's how planning really works in the in, in my real world is like I have my big ass hairy goal and I go, okay, what actions do I need to do to actually get there? That's yeah. pretty much the if I could compress day, by, could day by day, step by step. Another little tip, actually, this is a really weird one. Um, on my Apple Watch, you've got an Apple Watch, you can do it sets like how many um like your, your goal a daily it gives you a daily goal, right? So um for, for calories burned and stuff like that. So I used to set, had mine for, set for like 600 calories a day. And quite a few times, because I was busy and I'd get my head down, I'd look up and I had an hour to go and there was no way I was going to make it. And I got so disenchanted. So what I've done now, I've set it for 240 calories, which is literally walking from the car to the office and back again, right? But that's my goal isn't to do that. My goal is to actually get the 200% or 300%. But if I don't achieve that, I still get the reward for actually getting my my goal that Apple set set me. Cheating? Right? It's not cheating. <laughs> it's, I have to do a little bit to get to that first goal, but then go to the second or third goals, and it's good. I average I've averaged seven hundred. I've seven hundred calories a day for the last month because Apple set set me a challenge of two. Uh, 23,300 calories, right, this month. And I actually got it yesterday. And my God, was it a struggle. But yeah. Like, you, you're just an overachiever, and a, definitely an overachiever. overachiever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, you, Sally, you probably missed a bit where we were saying how awesome you were. <laughs> <laughs> it would be really ironic, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think that's enough for today, Mark. Yeah, we had enough. We've started to waffle. Right, guys. Started. Started. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to grow my list. Tim's going to grow his subscribers. I'm going to get a head start by going, go there, sign up, and you get on my list. <laughs> comment. We've got, we've got a comment. We've got a comment. What? I've just got a comment. Oh, oh, Mikey, top tip. If you want to get something done, always be very clear on why it's important. Strength of why is directly related to like the getting. We should have just done that. We could have finished an hour ago. We could have done, yeah. Ah, yes. So why do you want to achieve that goal? Actually, this is a good point. It's a really good point. Why do I want more subscribers? Because more subscribers will lead, lead to larger revenues. So I could go, oh, I want to double my double my income next year. No, if I double, if I double or triple, my, if I triple my subscribers, I will probably double my income. So there you go. Cool. Guys, have a really, really good weekend. I'm celebrating my 35th wedding anniversary, so I'm starting an escape plan. I'm going to start a tunnel and dig my way out. So so, so let me get this right. You're celebrating your 35th wedding anniversary, and yet Anders is coming to town. Yes. So Anders are you married to Anders? Sorry? Are you married to Anders? No. No, he just happens to be coming. <laughs> So we're going, to, we're going to, and we're doing some marketing sessions with him. So we've got actually, shall I, shall I read this out? We've actually got a brilliant. Test, we have got a testimonial for this podcast and the other stuff we do. Shall I read it out? Yeah, go on. Okay. And then we'll call it quits for the day. Right. 
Our online business is not quite two years old yet. Mark Thompson, my friend and mentor, has been instrumental in its inception and growth. Don't worry, you get mentioned him. In the oh. beginning, Mark would use the word niche regularly. It took a while for us to find ours, but we did. Following Mark's course and one-to-one -one guidance, we were building. We are building a business that really works. It's hard. It's hard work, but good fun. Marketing should be good fun. Listen to the weekly podcast with Mark and Tim. Has listening to the weekly podcast with Mark and Tim has unearthed many tips, snippets of advice. And ultimately, an increase in our online sales. Yes, investing in Mark and Tim pays off. We are now uh, selling all over the world. Uh, last month, we smashed it. Thank you, Mark and Tim. AndersBrown.co.uk. Go and buy some mid-century furniture from them. They're awesome. So that's it. On that note, <laughs> and that self <laughs> on that self-indulgent note. <laughs> Have a great weekend, guys. Bye. Bye.